Hey guys, good morning. It is <clears throat> Wednesday before Christmas, so only a few more countdown days. If y'all are doing the countdown, it's in a few more days. It's not that much longer. Um, but anyways, um, let's see who's hopping on this morning. Um, see what we got anybody coming on this Wednesday morning maybe we'll see um, I hate just sitting here it's the hardest part of the job is to sit here hey Annette Annette I am so scared that I'm gonna go live on my like personal Facebook page one time and like you did I know you did one time <laughs> I have like this fear of going live on my personal Facebook page instead of in this group. Good morning, Helena. Good morning, Stephanie. Um, so like I'm like double checking is this brave and beautiful mamas because if I go live on my real Facebook group, I would be so embarrassed. <laughs> Cause don't nobody need to see this. <laughs> uh, like this, only only y'all special ladies are you know, just graced with the no makeup face like this. So consider yourself chosen. <laughs> but Annette has my babies today and I'm a little bit jealous. Um, I've not had them since Monday evening and I kind of didn't even know what to do with myself last night. Like me and Rob sat on the couch for like 30 minutes going, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? You want to do this? Uh, I don't know. Um, and, um, oh yeah, <laughs> you sure were, I remember that. <laughs> um, anyways, um, so I don't have much to ramble about this morning other than, uh, it is getting so close to Christmas time and I am so excited and I'm like probably as giddy as my kids are, um, and I'm just going to put this disclaimer out before I um, start this message, video, whatever you want to call that. This is, I've been up since 4.30. Last night, I kind of prepared something. And then at 4.30 this morning, I was like, I'm not doing that. I'm going to do something else. And so, I prayed about it. I thought about it since 4.30. And it's like crickets. I'm like, well, okay, I guess I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, no, I'm not. And I would get back in my word. I would play worship music. I'm like, God, give me something else. Give me something else. And I just keep coming back to this. And so hopefully it is for someone because God would not let me get away from it. Um, and hopefully it makes sense because that's the one reason I didn't want to do it. I'm like, this doesn't make sense. This is not, this isn't right. Like this, this doesn't go. I'm like, it doesn't flow. I'm like, this is, this isn't good. I'm not doing this one. I keep trying to change it, but God just keeps giving me crickets. So apparently I'm not supposed to change it. Even though since 4:30 this morning, I have tried to change it. Um, and I've tried to add to it and I tried to take away, but this is what I'm left with. So hopefully it blesses somebody this morning. Um, and it's kind of two topics that I want to talk about. It's, can you be thankful in your little and in your need and in your not quite where God has you yet? Can you be thankful in that season? And it's kind of um, also talking about how to, how to get to that place of thankfulness. So it kind of does go, but there's kind of like two different things in here. And... I liked both of them, and I didn't know how to mesh them, so it just made me two different lesson things, because um, the first one I liked, and the second one I liked, but they're both not big enough to put into one, so I just meshed them together for you. Um, so we'll see how this turns out, so let's let's just dive into it. Let me pray first, because I feel so scatterbrained this morning. It's probably because I've had cups of coffee and been up since 4.30, so my body's like, yeah! So let's pray. Dear Lord, I love you so much, God. I thank you that um, you are going to show up in this group this morning. I thank you that your words are going to go forth because 
I know that you've laid this on my heart and I know that I prayed about it and prayed about it and prayed about it and God for some reason you just would not take it off my heart so I ask that you just use me this morning to be the vessel that you speak through that these words just come out so fluently let your Holy Spirit just take over this group in this moment right now and you just show up and you show out and whether I bomb this that you still let it minister to someone and you just have your way in this group this morning in Jesus name amen all right, ladies, so now it's on Jesus, not me, so I'm good with that. All right, so I'm coming at it from Jesus feeds the, when Jesus feeds the 5,000, and um, it's John chapter 6, and I'm reading John's account of it, um, John chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. Uh, right now, that's what it is. It says, after this, Jesus crossed over the far side of the Sea of Galilee, also known as the Sea of Tiberias, a huge crowd of kept following him wherever he went because they saw the miraculous signs as he healed the sick. Then Jesus climbed a hill, sat down with his disciples around him. It was near the time of the Jewish Passover celebration. Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, where can we buy bread to feed these people? He was testing Philip for he already knew what he was going to do. So I'm gonna stop right there. He already knew what he was going to do. So he, he, he sat there and he saw the crowd coming and he looks over at Philip and he's like, what are we gonna do, Philip? And in, his, in Jesus, Jesus already, Jesus already had a plan. He knew what he was gonna do. But he was looking at Philip and, he, and it said that he wanted to test Philip in this moment. And so, do we sometimes in our life feel like that we're writing our own story, like that we're walking through our life and according to what we do, God goes, let me see how she's going to react to this and then I'll finish writing her story. Let me see what she's going to do with this and then I'll finish writing what I have for her. Guys, that is not what's happening up there. He has a story and it's written out for you and you can't mess that up. Because if you're in his will and you are, you are seeking his will and you are going after God, you're lined up in his story. He's not waiting to see what you're going to do, what your reactions are going to be to decide to write good things or blessings or provision in your story. It's already there for you. Because, it, I mean, it says right there, he already knew what he was going to do. He already has the story wrote out for you. And so... Um, that's one thing that I want to talk about. And then, um, so just knowing that God is already made a way, has already been your provision, has already been your enough, should just give you so much peace to where you're going, I'm good. I just got to walk this out and trust the Lord. Um, and then let's just finish this, the rest of this little part. It's not the whole story, but it's the little part of the story. And we're going to jump we're going to stay where we're at. So verses 7 through 13 now. And it says, um, Philip replied to the question of what are we going to do? Um, Philip replied, even if we worked for months, we would not have enough money to feed them. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. These, there is a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that for this huge crowd? Tell everyone to sit down, Jesus said. So they all sat down on the grassy slope. The men alone numbered about 5,000. Then Jesus took the loaf, gave thanks, and distributed them to the people. Afterwards, he did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. After everyone was full, Jesus told the disciples, Now gather the leftovers so that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the pieces and filled 12 baskets of scraps left by the people who had eaten the barley loaves. So that's where I want to ask you, can you give thanks over the little? That's what Jesus did. He had five loaves and two fish, and he lifted it up, and he gave thanks, even though it didn't look like enough, even though it was a little bit amount, even though there was five, the need was 5,000, and all he had was five and two. He lifted it up, and he gave thanks. So can, can we do that when we feel like, there's not enough, like maybe there, we go through seasons of life where there's not enough money, where there's not enough time, where there's not enough me to go around, where there's not enough patience, where there's not enough Christmas gifts, where there's not enough um, joy, where there's not enough 
where there's just a season of not enough. Can we still give thanks during those seasons of not enough? And we live in a day and an age because we live in America and we are spoiled, rotten little people. And we're never enough. We can have houses, two cars, food every night, and we still live under the concept of it's not enough. We want more, more, more. Gotta have more. And we have that mentality of gotta have more, gotta have more. And so I just read the statement the other day, and it says, when you are in the hands of Jesus, you are never not enough. So when we're in the hands of Jesus, there's never not enough. If we are in God's will and we are walking out this Christian life with him, he's always our provider. He's always our enough. And um, there were three things that I called in here um, of what we, here's the second part. I don't even know, but it just, it relates. It's good. So here's three things that I called was the first thing that we have to do to be thankful in this season of not enough, I guess is what you would say, is um, lean in. Um, just lean in. At this point when Jesus was feeding the 5,000, it was about the time that John the Baptist had died and Jesus loved him. He was, I mean, he was like, they were tight. They were bros. Um, and this was about the time that John the Baptist died. And guys, we still have to leave in, even if there's a death. Because sometimes our greatest opportunities will come at the most inconvenient time of our lives. Um, I remember that the Lord spoke to me so clearly just a few months after my mom passed away. It was like me and Jesus were like this. Even though I wasn't really talking to him, he had a lot to say to me. And they were good things. I just remember in my greatest inconvenience, in my greatest sorrow, in my greatest despair, um, was when I heard the Lord the most. Um, and a lot of times, we have to lean in even when we don't feel ready and even when we don't feel prepared. We still just have to lean in because God will show up in the times of your shortage if you trust him. And so um, even like when you read this story, the story of the 5,000, if you read it in Matthew's account, so if you go over to Matthew and you read the story in Matthew's account of the 5,000, it's recorded that Matthew says, send the crowd away. Jesus, just send them away. Like, don't even let them come. And so there's always this temptation to send the very thing away that God sent to supply you with your need. So that very thing that you prayed for, God may send it in an inconvenient way because he has this weird way of mix, mixing sour and sweet and making it taste good. You ever ate that Chinese food that's sweet and sour? Like, I don't like sour things but I like sweet and sour sauce. And so he has this cool way of sending, like when sour things happen, him adding that, speed, that sweet to it. And it just, it just makes this wonderful taste and concoction. And so when some sour things are coming at you and things that you just not expected, um, don't be tempted to send them away because that just may be God um, sending you the thing you, you prayed for. It just may not look like it at the time. Um, and sometimes our provision comes um, in our inconvenience. There's always to yeah. I can't read all that, Annette. And if I touch my screen, it's going to flip it. Um, sometimes our provision comes in the inconvenience times. Sometimes our provision comes when there's not enough Christmas money and we're, we're, we're stressing over what Christmas is going to look like and then all of a sudden someone blesses you with $100 or $200 or they say, I would love to bless your kid with this. Sometimes we have to be inconvenienced to be blessed because God is testing us just like he did Philip when he asked, what are we going to do? Sometimes... Our provision comes in our inconvenience. And um, how can you receive from God what you've not leaned into? So if you're wanting to receive something from God, but you have God stood back on you like this, 
How are you going to receive from him if you're not leaned into him, if you're not in his presence? It's like eating a really good meal. When that meal is good, you're not just kind of lean back in your chair, kind of going like this. No, you all up in that, all up in that plate. You are leaned in to that good meal and you are receiving that good meal and it is filling you. Guys, we have to do the same thing with God. When we want to receive from him, we have to lean in to him. And then the other thing that we have to do is look down. We have to change our perspective. In verse 3 in the same story, it says, Jesus climbed a hill and he sat down. He climbed a hill. That means his perspective was eye level. This was what he could see. But when he went up, he had, he had the change of perspective to higher up. And um, it matters where you're seated. It matters your perspective. It matters the way you are looking at your situation. You have to get a heaven perspective. And heaven perspective is elevated and looking down. When you have the top view of your mountain, it will look so big. So if you're eye level with your mountain and you're looking up, the mountain looks huge. But when you climb that mountain and you have the downward view of your mountain, that mountain don't seem so big anymore. When you have valley perspective, everything looks huge. But when you climb that mountain and you get mountaintop perspective, that's when your problems look smaller. Top view always makes things look smaller. It's like riding in an airplane. When you're down with the buildings and when you're down with the cars, they look overwhelmingly huge and you feel this big. But when you get in that airplane and you get high level, when you get God's perspective, when you go above the problems and you get top view perspective, you feel like you can just reach down and pluck them up. Like they look like little ants. Um, so when we get different perspectives, our problems seem to not see so big. And guys, we're allowed to do this in Ephesians 6 2 or 2 6 i can't remember it's in ephesians i think it's 2 6 it says that we are seated in heavenly places that means we're allowed to look at it from top view we're allowed to climb that mountain and go this problem is in god's hand jesus knew something that they didn't know because he had come from places that they had never been. Jesus knew what heaven's perspective looked like. Jesus knew what top view looked like. But the disciples didn't. They had never gone to top view. They were still eye level with it. But when they climbed that mountain, they got the top view. And guys, when we go up, when we make our problems heavenly seated, and we get heavenly seated, and we view our problems through heavenly seated, we will know that God has got this. Um, and when we look at our problems, sometimes we just go like, go like God, how are you going to fix this? Like, I can't get out of this problem. I need you to fix this problem. John 6, 35 says that I am the bread of life. God will always answer your problem to who he is. And I'm going to say that again because that was good. God will always answer your problems with who he is. So I am. He said, I am the bread of life. And in feeding the 5,000, he was the bread. He was the fish. In your problem, in your situation right now, he can be answered. When you're begging God to do something, his answer is, I am provision. I am trustworthy. I am way maker. I am life. I am healer. I am redeemer. I am restorer. He will answer your problem with who he is. I am filling the need. I am. So guys, we need to lean in to who he is. We got to change that perspective view and we got to listen. We are so bad about da -da 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 -da, telling, 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 telling. Yeah, there's a point where we've got to listen. God will not ask anything of you that he's not willing to give you. So God's not going to walk you through need without being willing to provide the need. So he's not going to send a storm without being willing to take you out of the storm or being willing to calm the storm. Um, 
in Philippians 4 19 it says my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus so that lets me know that he's my supplier he is my provision. He is my way maker. He's not going to take me somewhere that when I ask for his help, he's going to go, oh, can't help you there. You got yourself in this. He is, he is way maker. He is there. Go back to I am. Andrew asked the question in verse nine, how far, how far is this going to go? And that question, if you ask, if you're asking God, how long is this going to last? How long am I going to have to walk this road? How long am I going to have to stay here? And I think that depends on who you think God is. I think that depends on if he is who he says he is to you. So how far would the bread go in the story of the five loaves and two fish? How far was it going to go? Well, it depends on who you think Jesus is. If you think that he is who he says he is in John 6, 35, I am the bread, then guess what? If Jesus is the bread, you will never need bread. If Jesus is your joy, you're never going to lack in joy. If Jesus is your peace, then you have peace. It's who he says he is and who you believe he is to let you know if you're going to lack in it or not. You may be physically lack in it, but your inside, your like Jesus man, Holy Spirit inside, ain't going to lack in it. There will be times where you're probably not happy. I wasn't happy when my mom passed away, but still inside of me. There was joy. There's been times where Rob and I bank account looked like crap, but I still had that peace of knowing that somehow, some way, God was going to work it out. And if you could look at my whole entire body and not just shoulders up, you would know that this mama right here ain't missed the meal because we healthy people here. Okay? So just because your physical doesn't look like Jesus is providing, you got to go to Holy Spirit man in there and go, he is peace, he is provider, he is all these things that he says he is. So I've rambled enough, if that makes any sense to y'all. Let's lean in, let's change our perspective, and let's listen up to see who God says he is this morning. So that's my challenge. Lean in, uh, lean in, look up. I think, I don't even know my points. What are my points? Let me go back and see what I told y'all to do. It's lean in, look down. <laughs> lean in, look down, and listen up. Um, and they all start with L's. That's why it messed my brain up. So lean in to who God says he is. Look down. Stop getting eye level perspectives. Climb up that mountain. Look down at your problems. And listen up to who God says he is to you. So that's what I have for you ladies. Um, it's also Warfare Wednesday. And I looked this morning. And there were 44 comments, needs, prayer requests. So ladies, hop on. Pray for your sister. That's what this group is about. Is um, just loving on the sisters. And uh, praying for their needs. Um, so, Warfare Wednesday, let's make it a point today to hop on um, that thing that Annette made and pray for the needs of the people that went out and um, make it a point today to pray for your sisters and needs. Don't forget about your um, secret sister. Um, oh, hey, Charlotte. Um, don't forget about your secret sister. Send them something, even if it's, just, if it's just a Merry Christmas card. I think this is our last month with your secret sister, so go out with a bang with them. I will not see you before Christmas, so Merry Christmas! I hope you get all your heart's desire and your kiddos just have a blast. So Merry Christmas, and we will catch you back Friday with a special guest. Love y'all ladies. Bye!